the ballot that's being presented. It's a six-part ballot. First you vote whether or not to recall candidate ABC, but then there's a separate slate of candidates to fill each of those positions. That's why we have positioned each of the panels separate from one another so that you know not only the incumbent, but people who are running for his particular seat. Even if you are not in favor of the recall, it's important for you to vote for the candidate of your choice to replace them because your no vote on the recall may be overridden by the rest of the community who says yes on the recall, and we want to make sure that you have a vote in how our city moves forward. With that said, and the complexity is of this ballot, it's my pleasure to introduce Tina Javid. Tina Javid is one of our government affairs um, chairs at the Fulton Chamber of Commerce. Again, to keep this unbiased, Tina has no voting options in this election. She does not live in the city of Fullerton. She works for the gas company, is a member of our board of directors. Tina, come on. Right. It certainly is my pleasure to be here. Um, as a gas company, we do feel this is important for all the reasons Teresa said so. Um, you guys are our customers, and we want to make sure we give you the opportunity. Uh, this is a complicated time. So we need to know who's running, what do they stand for, so that you can make an informed decision. <coughs> So with that, just general housekeeping, we're going to go through, we'll do three slates of candidates. Um, there's no literature out yet. We're going to wait till the end, and then we have a little uh, coffee and water and, and cookies so that you have an opportunity, really, if you want to do follow-up questions, that you can meet with the candidates and talk to them more one-on-one. -on -one. So that's the basic format. Um, because it is complicated, a lot of times you ask specific questions. What we thought would be the best use of the time is to give every candidate five minutes. So within that five minutes, we really ask them to focus on three things. One, because we are a business organization, what is your view and how do you look at economic development? Because that's important to the city. Another would be, what do you, how do you feel about um, housing, low-income housing, Coyote Hills? Those are, again, two very big issues for the city. And then finally, you set that opportunity on stating why, if you're an incumbent, you should remain the incumbent, or not incumbent, I guess the person sitting in the seat. And then if you're someone challenging, what is your agenda? Why are you running? What's important to you? So uh, that's the basic format. We'll bring up five. We'll do a transition. They'll go down. Then the next five will come up. And we'll go back and forth three times. So with that, let's go for our first panel. And we will have uh, the candidates that are seeking the seat currently held by Councilman Dick Jones. So if Dick Jones can come up and the folks running for that. Oh, oh sorry. I think you got it wrong. I did get it wrong. We're going to go Don Bacon. I'm happy to speak Dick, first. Dick, you know what? I'm looking at Dick right here. We're going to go with Don Bacon. First in the hearts of the countrymen. You went to me first. I was a little late. Yep, we'll go right here. And then we've got Rick Alvarez, Paula Williams, who cannot attend tonight, Jane Rands, and Greg Seaborn. Hi, Rick. Good to see you. So this will be the first slate. And Councilman Nakin, I'm going to ask you actually to come up. You take the podium. Aaron is going to be the timekeeper. You get five minutes. Aaron will give you a 2.5 minute warning and a one minute warning. So with that, I will acquiesce the place of the microphone. I'm sorry for reading what I'm supposed to be doing here. Well, good evening. My name is Don Bankhead. I'm on the Fullerton City Council. I'm a retired Fullerton police captain. I've actually worked for the people of Fullerton for over 50 years. I've just made it my life. I moved to Fullerton in 1957. I fell in love with the city. I've watched it grow. I've grown with it. And uh, I have made my life basically serving the people of Fullerton. At this time, I'm here today to convince you that I want to remain and finish out this term that I was 
elected in, and I might say I was the, the highest vote getter in November a year and a half ago. This would be my last term, and I'm asking you tonight to let me finish this term. Of course, the economy is one of the bad things right now. It's difficult on all of us that, quite frankly, many people are out of work and we're looking for work. But the city of Fullerton, the downtown has grown, it's prospered over the course of the years. The city, we have actually won many awards. One was a federal award, one was state, one was Orange County. It was for the development of the downtown. We preserved the old buildings. As many of you know, if you've lived in this area for any period of time, Anaheim <laughs> tore down all of their old buildings. Brea tore down all of their old buildings. And it's unfortunate because they destroyed much of their past in doing so. By preserving the downtown and the old buildings in and around Fullerton, we have a heritage that not only we enjoy, but our children will also enjoy. When we talk about the economy, the buildings, the work, and so, you know, downtown, while many people don't like the number of people that do go downtown, it basically provides jobs and things that wouldn't be there if it, if it wasn't a thriving area in the city. We do our best to maintain our major industries in town. Unfortunately, we've lost some, but we've maintained many of our larger businesses. And in doing so, their employment. Unfortunately, even the major businesses that we have been able to save for the city of Fullerton, they've lost many of their employees because they've downsized as well. So it's very important, all of us, or any of us that are on the city council, to keep in mind to deal with issues that will encourage businesses to move to the city of Fullerton. We've established a group in our city that keeps in touch with people looking for a place to relocate their businesses. We contact them. We deal with them. A long time ago, we established a way that if the new business moves into town, our department that deals with permits and so forth will literally take new businesses and walk them through the process. Now, a lot of people will tell you that getting through and getting permits in the city of Fullerton is very difficult. But that's not for new businesses. Sometimes uh, a contractor that's been in Fullerton for a long time come down and, and try to get a permit to do something uh, that uh, our people know and so forth. It's more difficult for them to get a permit than new business people. But I've been contacted and told many times through the years that I've worked for the city and worked for you that Fullerton is a friendly city. And there are sometimes some things fall through the crack and people are uh, disturbed by the period of time that they have to spend to acquire permits and things of this nature. Anyway, like I said, I'm running out of time and I'm here tonight to convince you that I'm the person to continue to serve on the city of Fullerton in your best interest. I have a lot of energy. I serve on many different, I sit on the OCTA board of directors. I sit on the Orange County Groundwater Board of Directors. I sit on the Solid Waste Board of Directors, which is your landfills, and I do that to try my best to keep the costs of these things to our citizens as low as they can possibly be. And with being where I work and what I do, I'm able to do that. In the Orange County Water District, I sit on the Executive Committee Board that deals with benefits and things for the employees, and as we all know, the salaries and benefits of employees is what causes everything to go up. So thank you for being here tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll now ask Rick Alvarez to come up. And if I could just do a, a friendly reminder to those in the audience, if you can make sure your cell phones are off, that would be great. Thank you all. Thank you for the Chamber of Commerce for putting sponsoring this program tonight. And thank you all most for being here. It was 
really looking forward to a great turnout. I sent uh, Lou Ponzi an uh, email uh, a while back asking him why they weren't talking this up at the Chamber of Commerce meetings and what have you. So sure enough that the following days, a couple of days after that, he had uh, put it in the register that we were going to have these meetings. So it's really exciting. Um, 50 years ago, we came to this country. I was born in Havana, Cuba, and we were escaping communism. When we came here to this country, we were basically assured two things. We were assured freedom, and we were assured opportunity. We took those two things and we ran with it as a family. We basically worked our way across the United States looking for work. We found that we had a very, very strong work ethic, and we found our way to California. Since that time, I've graduated from the university. I've, I've run you know, some fairly large corporations, and I've started my own business here in Fullerton 12 years ago. So I have a security business here in Fullerton. I've been in the security business for about almost 30 years. And uh, that's basically where, we're, where we are today. Um, 28 years ago, Norma Bass and Cherry uh, took my wife and I under her wing and got us to move into this beautiful city. And um, since that time, I've been serving uh, you, uh, the citizens of Fullerton, currently on the Planning Commission and also on the Traffic Commission. Through those experiences, I found out how much other people love Fullerton besides just ourselves and our family. There are a lot of people in Fullerton that actually love this town. So going to the next level with the friends that I have and the, the group that sur surrounds me and my family, they basically said to me, Rick, you need to step up to the next level. And when this recall thing came up, they said, you need to go into this city council and see what you can do there for the city. <coughs> As a business owner, I bring conservative uh, principles to light, to the, to the situation, to the city. We balance budgets. We know what it's like to balance a budget. We, don't, we can't run a deficit when you run a business, okay? You have to live within your means. We do that in our families every day. Every one of us here has to do that. Cities, for some reason, feel as though sometimes they can get away with having budgets with deficits. I don't accept that. I don't believe that that's realistic, and that's not something that we need to go into especially when we have a $10 million reserve, which our previous city manager worked so hard on, uh, to lose that reserve, it'd be very, very uh, difficult for us to do that and then replace it again. So that's where I come from as far as uh, economic development. From a city standpoint, bringing revenues to the city, we understand as business owners how difficult it is for us to do business in California. We understand the regulations and taxes are basically strangling us. CEO Magazine has placed California as the 50th state in friendliness to businesses. So it's very difficult for us to think that we're going to figure out a way to increase revenues here in Fullerton. One of the things we always talk about is we need to bring business to Fullerton. Well, when you've got an available market of, that is shrinking of businesses that are not coming here, the, we might get lucky every once in a while. And we might steal a business from La Mirada or a business from La Mojave. But they're doing the same thing to us. Every city is in the same situation. So when we gain one, we may lose one. And so it's a zero-sum game. We have to elect officials that understand the business model, understand ways to go up to Sacramento or interface with our elected officials at the state level and at the federal level who can make a difference and hear our pleas for how we make this state better and how we put it back on the map as far as economic development for all. When it comes to uh, Coyote Hills development, uh, fundamentally I've, I've told both groups, the Chevron people and the Save the Coyote Hills people, that the last thing I'd like to see there is 700 and some homes. However, I would like to see something else put up there that generates revenue. We have an opportunity with that land to bring permanent revenue to the city and, uh, and permanent jobs. If we're smart about it, we can negotiate and we can collaborate together to bring these things to pass in the spirit of cooperation with one another as opposed to being adversarial. So that's what I have to say about Coyote Hills there. Um, one of the other things is we need to bring is transparency to the city and respect and honor back to the city. Uh, transparency is basically information. The more information people get, the better off we are as a city. And that's one of the other things that I'm very, very keen on. Because actually the information that we put out is what, we, what will protect us at the end of the day when we do these things. So thank you very much, and I appreciate your vote on June 5th. Rick Alberts.
Good evening, my name is Jane Rands. Thank you to the Chamber of Commerce for hosting this, and thank you all for turning out here tonight. My vision for economic development in the city of Fullerton revolves around improved quality of life. There are a few problems we need to resolve first off, and one of the notable issues is since the beating death of Kelly Thomas, people, I understand, have avoided bringing business to this town. and we. That's an imperative for um, reforming our police department, and I propose doing that under citizens' oversight. As well, our infrastructure is notably dilapidated. Our streets are very rough. People complain about it. Um, the infrastructure of the streets, as well as the water delivery system, have not been prioritized in the budget for 20 years. And that's one of my priorities as a council member when um, forming the city's budget. And another problem that needs to be resolved that will help in our uh, economics downtown is cleaning up the downtown businesses. We have conditional use permits that aren't being enforced currently. And if this isn't <coughs> the effects of the rowdy downtown unfairly impact our daytime businesses where they have to clean up the damage from nighttime business users. I do not support the Business Improvement District that's been discussed a number of times, originally from the Redevelopment Agency and most recently by our Planning Director at a Planning Commission meeting. Um, I have real concerns about having <coughs> new taxes levied upon our downtown businesses when the economy is so tight. I also support protecting our valued resources we have, such as our downtown, especially because that becomes a destination that brings people to Fullerton. I also support maintaining our industrial zoning rather than converting it to mixed use or retail residential because the, that industrial use provides good paying jobs or better paying jobs than you typically see in retail. As well, it provides an affordable space or a more, more affordable property for innovative new businesses to start up here in our town. <coughs> And I do support our locally owned businesses. Not only do they provide the sales tax revenue and jobs that any business can provide, but because they're locally owned as opposed to um, internet or chain stores that are all over the country or over a region, those property owners, um, their profits, they spend mostly here in town. And it recirculates within our economy. And to help support our economy in the future, I'm a big proponent of a variety of mobility within the city. Someday cars will be passe. Right now they're clogging our streets. And unfortunately, as we build more and more people come to Fullerton, people aren't able to get around. Um, I would hate for people to avoid doing business or coming here to do business in our town because it's difficult to get around. So I'm a proponent of expanding public transportation, cycling, walkability, and making this really a 21st century city. Some of the initiatives that I support, oh sorry, I do need to address Coyote Hills, even though I'm running short on time, um, with affordable housing as well. Affordable housing was a lost opportunity under redevelopment, <coughs> squandered a lot of the 20% set aside. It went to um, buying up existing rental property, being demolished, and being converted into for sale uh, affordable housing. We ended up with a net loss of truly affordable housing. And with Coyote Hills, I feel that if we maintain it as open space, it will provide two benefits economically to our community. Number one, it will improve, increase the property values of the neighboring homes. It will, and then as well, it will make Fullerton, a destination city for hikers and um, trail users. And when they come to use the trails, they will also use the services here in town. Sorry, I shouldn't say use services, but will utilize the businesses here in town. So what I stand for is 
balanced decision making, not coming from an ideological perspective that limits our opportunities, but balancing the needs of the community, the needs of our business, the needs of a good quality of life through a good, healthy environment. And back to what I started out with, and that was, thank you very much. Thank you to the Chamber for putting this event together and uh, getting us all here to uh, be able to express our views and our vision for the city and uh, tell, us, tell you a little bit about us. Um, I was born here uh, in 1973. I've spent nearly 40 years living and going to school here and now raising a family. Um, in that time, I've done a lot of uh, uh, various activities related with the city and with uh, various community uh, groups. Um, I'm also very involved in professional societies. I'm a licensed land surveyor, and one of the things that I think really helps in my profession is get involved in professional societies, in this case, California Land Surveyor Association, and work with them to um, spur um, our growth as an industry, to let the public know what we are all about and how we operate and the important role we play in land development. Um, as such, I'm one of the directors of the California Land Fair Association. I'm also vice president of the local chapter. Um, I've worked with them now for close to 10 years, and so I have a lot of experience working with a, a diverse group of people with a very specific goal in mind. I also serve as the chairman of the Infrastructure Review Committee. Uh, this particular commission looks at the capital improvement program and tries to identify, is it meeting the needs of the public, and sets priorities and tries to identify uh, appropriate funding. I'm also a program facilitator at Santiago Canyon College in the Survey Mapping Sciences Department. So I run the survey program there. I'm also an instructor, part-time instructor. Uh, in 2009, I was voted by my peers to, as the uh, faculty uh, for the Faculty Excellence Award. It's the highest honor you can give a faculty member at the school. I was honored to receive that. So let's talk a little bit about the economic development. I think that's what we're all concerned with. You know, the, I've said since uh, running in 2010, one of the things that we can do as a city to really improve the economic outlook for our businesses is to get out of their way, to allow them to do what they do best, promote themselves, market themselves, sell their products, sell their services, and people will use them. But if every time somebody wants to open up a shop, every time somebody wants to expand their business, we throw hurdle after hurdle at them, it slows it down. It makes it nearly impossible for them to really grow and to maximize their potential. Probably the easiest way for the city to uh, help businesses, and I think this translates into homeowners as well, is for us as a city to invest in our infrastructure. You know, I, I, you can't drive a block or even, even less and notice how deplorable our roads are, how bad our curbs are, um, our sidewalks that are essentially urban bridges over tree roots that the city has uh, not maintained. It, it really is sad and it's embarrassing. So I want to invest in that. I want to ch change our priorities on spending, invest in the infrastructure, improve the roads, improve the curbs, the sidewalks, the, the landscaping, and the city's right away. And I think when you do that, you're going to find homeowners and businesses want to locate in Fullerton. It's an inviting and comfortable area. You only need to look down in South County to look at the wide parkways, the lush green belts, and see that that is appeasing. You know, businesses do locate there for a reason. That is a big component of it. It's the look and the feel. We need that here in Fullerton. That's an investment in our infrastructure. Hugely important. And in that, I think that the Chamber has a role as well. On the issue of housing, I'm a land surveyor. I know the value of land development, and I know that there are that there is a distinct cost to it. The city has no business getting into the land development racket, and it is a racket. You know, 
know, you know, you develop something, it's to make money. The city's got no business doing that. And I'm glad to see redevelopment is dead and going away, slowly but surely. But let me make it clear, I do support Coyote Hills. They started off with 3,000 plus homes that they wanted to build. It's been negotiated and scaled down to 750 or so. I think that's a good, uh, a good negotiation. The city's going to win with, uh, the schools are going to win, large endowments. Uh, there's uh, set aside for park maintenance uh, personnel. All around, I think it's the best possible solution given that the city does not own it and the city cannot possibly afford to pay for it and buy it. As far as initiatives go, I want to see some uh, changes in the police department. I think there's a few things that we can do, but I'm out of time. Thank you. Thank you, candidates. The first panel is excused. And as you can see, it's, it's tough to get all that in in five minutes. So I'm sure they will all stick around uh, for us so that we can talk to them individually afterwards. Now I'd like to invite up our second slate of candidates. Me. The second is to be filling the seat currently filled by Councilman Dick Jones. If they can come up front, that'd be great. And it'll be the same process. They'll have five minutes, and we'll have Aaron up front as our time keeper. And the warning for our candidates to know, you're going to see a two and a half minute warning, so don't let that shock you. Then you'll see a one minute warning, and then at that point, and then it'll be time. Comfortable? Councilman Jones, come on up. Thank you very much. <clears throat> there are basic criteria that I think are important for your councilman and wishfully for any elected official. And these are honesty and truthfulness. As a councilman, I have never knowingly lied or given misinformation, except once or twice, to young children about Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny. Some candidates are giving misinformation, or even worse. Should these people be leading the city? Number two, ethics, accepted standards of society, action, and judgment. Three, concern, care, and compassion for our citizens. Four, fiscal knowledge with responsible conservative decisions regarding the city's finances. Five, accomplishments in life that are beneficial and helpful to others. A track record or proof of a successful person. Six, Vision of what is needed and good for our city and citizens. Seven, honor the U.S. Constitution to which one must be sworn to that its commitment. Eight, intelligence to fairly deal with complex problems. Nine, respectfulness. Ten, good leadership, which includes all of the above. These I practice. We have a very good balanced city that is proven by our annual State of the City reports for the last 15 years. Review them. Our award-winning downtown has moved from pawn and antique shops to various assorted large and businesses and small businesses. Our libraries, parks, community center providing health, fitness, and enrichment programs have all been upgraded and expanded. Our renowned education programs from K-1 to post uh, graduate degrees are enthusiastically supported by our city. We have successfully managed the recent ongoing Great Recession by continuing in capital and infrastructure improvements, expanding affordable housing and businesses. Salary reductions have been made to all city employees, including the city council. Employee pension contributions and reduced new employee pension plans have all been instituted. The state has taken a large portion of our economic development funds that came from your property taxes. With all of these changes, we have made a ten, maintained a 10% reserve and will continue to. It's there, 
We pledge to do that. Justice is being served just as past week in regards to the Kelly Thomas death. With the release of the Thomas Police video last week, I was finally able to witness the tragedy that caused his death. It is beyond disturbing. And my sincere sympathies to the Thomases and their friends. For 42 years, we have legally added a 10% tax to your water bill, as have other California cities. That franchise tax went to the general fund. From that fund, the money was provided for pump, pipe, replacement maintenance, but some remained in the general fund. The cost of water to the city from MWD and Orange County Water District has greatly increased over the years. With the cost of the water increase, the 10% tax has brought more dollars to the general fund. Recently, the California Supreme Court uh, ruled that a water maintenance fee was appropriate, but the general fund could not get a portion of it. Last month, the council voted to deny the franchise tax to the general fund. We volunteered this change without any legal action forcing us to do it because it was a right thing to do. Water maintenance costs are presently being evaluated. If there are overcharges, we are currently evaluating a program of restitution. Businesses produce revenue. Governments don't. They just spend those revenues. So it is necessary that the council the biz be business friendly and help our business grow and acquire new businesses, and we do that. Fulton is a very good city for all. I ask you to vote no on the recall so that I can continue to serve our fine city well, and I will continue to follow the 10 criteria I listed in the beginning. And I haven't accomplished much in life. There will be folder or papers out there to pick up after the meeting. Thank uh, Teresa Harvey for inviting me here this evening. Um, my position and vision for economic development. I personally feel that the, the heart of Fullerton is downtown and that it's critical for us to, to look at our economic development through the prism of what we can do downtown. At the present moment, my feeling is we've sort of been running on a one-trick pony of lots of restaurants and bars. Uh -huh. And there are starting to come other venues downtown that might not be evening venues, but I, talking to the various small ownership down there, they're, they're successful and they have a lot of color. Uh, Roadkill, Buffalo Exchange, Night Owl, you name it. It's a personal, very local, not franchised uh, color, which I think is what Fullerton's about. And I think we need to encourage that. And I think we need to encourage it because I believe the demographics, our business demographics are changing. We're becoming more and more like a college town. Cal State Fullerton will be transformed from just a commuter college to a more of a residential college, which means that are going to have a, a lot more college-age kids, younger kids, enjoying themselves in our city. They buy things. I think... Uh, Jack's Bicycles has a great location right now. Um, and I, so I encourage the business community to start reevaluating what they see as the vision of Fullerton and, and take into consideration the uptick in the youth that are coming to Fullerton. I was just at a get together last Friday and I met a lot of uh, young individuals, a lot of entrepreneurs, very colorful, very passionate about it, Fullerton. They've been living here, most of them have gone to school here and they want to give back. And that's the, that's the spirit that we need to protect in Fullerton. The Hilton Galleries, I think, is a good thing that has happened here in Fullerton. By promoting and prospering other ways in which to make money and to live in Fullerton is a good thing. And because of what I see is what's going to transpire with Cal State Fullerton, their needs 
perhaps are different than our needs or your needs specifically. They tend to be more recreational. The hundreds of people use um, our trails each week, hiking, walking their dogs, mountain biking. That is why I see a viable use for what, what we call Coyote Hills, by staying open. When it comes to housing, including low-income housing, I believe the best housing is home ownership. I got my house, I would say about the mid to late 90s, when the economy was down, just like it is now, and I got a great deal. It was a starter home. I didn't make a lot of money, my wife, my wife didn't make a lot of money, but both of our careers were moving up. We were projecting that we were going to be making more money and afford it. I still have that house. My kids grew up there, they went to schools here, and I think that's the opportunity we have to give more people. Southwest Fullerton is a landmine of great opportunity of households. We need to promote the real estate market and trying to get those starter homes to the right families, to the people that want to stay here and raise their families here. I don't like the fact of having multi-level low-income housing or extreme low-income housing because I think it basically slaves those people to that property. I think home, home ownership is the American way and we need to promote that as being low income or moderate income. But they fix it up, they beautify that house because they own it and it becomes not just low income but high income. And one minute to say the real reason why I'm here is because of Kelly Thomas and the homeless. And we need to fix that. We need to amend our relationship with the police department. I've talked to a lot of people from many walks in Fullerton and that is the key to making us a successful town, a successful businesses. Because when people want to return here and they see what we're doing, they're going to spend their money and we're going to be more prosperous. Because our budget is property taxes and sales taxes. Promote property, promote people coming here and purchasing a way of life. And that's Fullerton. Thank you. Hi, and oh, that's kind of loud, too loud. My name is Roberta Reed, and um, I decided to try to replace Mr. Jones, Mr. Dr. Jones. Um, I want to thank the chamber. Uh, that's really great that you put this together, and um, and for everybody who decided to come out, I'm impressed. Um, maybe I'm too close. I'm getting the next. Um, um, <laughs> All of a sudden, I lost my head. Uh, um, you know, I noticed that we have a lot of really good candidates here uh, running for this election. And it all depends on the recall. And um, the recall is the reason why we're here. But I've heard said that what happens we get one of these people in there to replace them. Well, hey, listen to them. They're all well-informed and very fine people, family people. I feel that you are watching democracy in action. This is what it's all about, folks. When you see things you find annoying, or more than annoying, out and out criminal, you get in there and you say something, and you take action. And if that action don't work, then you try another way. I've been really active in politics for several years, and Mostly as an as a activist or an agitator, you might say. I get in there and I find out what I want to find out, and if that person won't help me, I find another person. I, they will send me all around City Hall, but I'll get that answer and I'll find out. And I'll tell you, Fullerton is extremely good staff. They will help you if you get the right person. Oops, right person and right department. They will help you. They're very good about that. Okay, 
My vision for Corporal Luton is a place where my children and my grandchildren can feel secure. And I have a bunch of grandkids, and I love Fullerton, and we have great parks, we have great schools, and some of them are attending the schools here. Um, I'm hoping that we can maintain a good balance in this city and that we don't tear it all down. I'm tired of seeing things torn down. Um, Rebuilt with something that is too big for the amount of parking that is provided. Um, this brings us to Coyote Hills. We have some, we have some beautiful hills, and I hate to see it destroyed. I'm, I'm really big on trees, and when you start knocking down trees, I'm in there. You know, um, the Senior uh, Citizen Center is where. I do a lot of my volunteer work and activities. I participate in just about everything over there and I thoroughly enjoy the people. There are good people in Fullerton and they're good businesses and I'm hoping that we can maintain this. Um, the Kelly Thomas issue is traumatic and it's what, it's what got us all fired up. It's hard to think in current times that we can have such a horrible thing happen. You know, <coughs> judge, we have, we have a bill of rights, and we have a constitution, I hope. I don't like to see uh, the police taking someone's life in their hands and being judge, jury, and executioner all in one shot. And our city council hired these people knowing they were a This is happening all across the United States, and we're making a stand here. Thank you. Hi, my name is Travis Kiger. Um, I've lived in Florida for a while now, and I'm raising my family here, and I love this town. Um, speaking about economic development, uh, I am a, a very strong proponent of the free market, and I'm, I'm you know, now with, with the divide, de demise of redevelopment, um, I see this as an opportunity for Fullerton businesses, now that we no longer have to compete with other cities to offer subsidies to big box stores like Costco's and Walmart's and um, things like that, it's, it's really an opportunity with a level playing field for Fullerton's businesses to thrive based on merit. Um, I think what we'll see is, is totally free market customers buying what they want um, and, and good businesses thriving without government intervention. And so I, you know, I, I'm excited about that. I'm excited about Fullerton's future in that regard. Um, at, you know, as a, a planning commissioner, I was appointed um, by Bruce Whitaker uh, a little over a year ago to the planning commission. When I first um, started on the planning commission, I was pretty upset by the way that some businesses and property owners were treated by the, by the city staff. Um, the, the, the staff used, used their leverage to really try and take um, as much as it could financially from you know, landowners who were trying to make really insignificant changes and just trying to grow um, the, the value of the property or their businesses. And, and I, you know, I was appalled at the way that the city would try to make them, those landowners, pay for for actual city improvements to city property that had no nexus to the project as, as, as it was presented. You know, I stood up and I, and I, I fought for those businesses and I, I like to think that I convinced um, some of my, my fellow planning commissioners that, you know, that this was wrong and that we needed to change this. Now it's been a year and, you know, new projects are coming forward and I'm not seeing those things anymore. So I, I, I think that's a victory and I'm really proud of that. Um, so. That's one thing, and the other the other issues that we're facing really have to do with um, our financial priorities, the way that we've handled the budget. Uh, you know, if, if you look at if you look at what we pay for in our general fund, almost all of it goes to salaries, benefits, and pensions. And, and um, you know, if there's going to be any reorganization of priorities, it, there's no way to do it without looking at those items. And and I I think what's happened is 
over the years, we've had um, council members who are kind of beholden to the public employee unions. They're not doing a good job of negotiating with those unions. Uh, you know, as a result, we've got almost half a billion dollars in pension debt for this town. And, and that's really concerning to me. That's one, actually one of the reasons why I'm running. Um, I think we need to do something about that. That debt is sucking more and more life out of our budget every year. As a result, we're actually, we've been diverting funds from enterprise funds back into the general fund to pay for those pensions. Um, you know, so, so things like our streets and roads and sewers and water pipes, they're all, they're all starting to crumble. I'm sure you guys have noticed that you've been driving around. Um, it, you know, we have not been good stewards of our city here. And, and it's time to change it. It's time to put a priority on, on negotiations with the public employee unions and, and you know, really standing up for the taxpayers instead of the, instead of the unions. And you know, on that note, um, it's, I think it's really important to point out with the recall specifically that the majority of the funding opposing the recall has come from the public employee unions. And, if, and if, if you think they're looking out for us, the taxpayers, the business owners in Fullerton, they're not. They're looking out for themselves, and I think that says a lot about um, how you should vote on the recall. So, thank you. Thank you guys for inviting us all. Um, I can just hold this, this will be perfect, right? Because I'll have to be like this. I told the lady earlier, but I don't think I heard what I was saying. Uh, basically, I probably won't need the whole five minutes because my message is kind of simple. <clears throat> my name is Matthew Hakeem, and uh, I am not one of these bought and paid for politicians that you get to choose from. Uh, today is my birthday. And um, a few things. The reason I'm running in this election is that I want to bring my heart and my spirit to the city council. I think that's the kind of leadership that's missing uh, about Coyote Hills. I think it's a bad idea. Uh, I think they're using fear to try to convince the people that it's the right idea to build. When I would ask them, what about all the empty homes and apartments and businesses already in Fullerton? Now... For the business leaders, uh, I would ask, please, keep your businesses in Fullerton. This is a great city. Keep your jobs in Fullerton. Uh, we have a great opportunity here, and uh, we shouldn't waste it. And uh, basically, that's it. I want to trust the business leaders. I think uh, it's a bad idea for the city council or the mayor to try to control business. I think that's corrupt. That's you know, one thing I'm against. Um, I think that's it. I won't need the whole five minutes. It's simple. And you guys have a choice here, yeah. right? Thank you. And the final candidate for this slate will be Dorothy Bursek. Good evening. I'd like to thank the cham Chamber for hosting this event tonight, and I'd like to also congratulate the Chamber on their 118th year of operations in the city. My name is Dorothy Bursick, and I'm on the ballot as an alternative for your consideration should Councilman Jones be recalled. I plan on using my time tonight uh, to do three things. First is to let you know a little bit more about who I am and who I am as a candidate. Uh, the second is to talk just a little bit about the recall election and uh, which is the focus of the June 5th ballot. And the third will be to discuss some of the issues that the Chamber has asked us to discuss tonight. Uh, who am I? I was born, raised, and educated K-12 through in Fullerton. I'm a 40-plus year resident. I have my undergraduate degree from USC, a Master's in Business Administration from the Harvard Business School, and a Master of Arts in Law and Diplomacy from the Fletcher School of Law and Diplomacy at Tufts University. I have prior professional background in both public relations and management consulting. And I would just briefly highlight one study that I did as a, as a part of a team for a consulting firm called A.T. Carney. We um, conducted a study for the American Chamber of Commerce in Japan where we looked at the competitive environment for U.S. companies in the country. Uh, our steering committee included executives from some of the world's top corporate, uh, cor corporations, including DuPont, GM, Monsanto, uh, and ConocoPhillips, to name a few. And we also took a sectoral level of approach 
where we identified both structural and legislative impediments for companies trying to compete in the Japanese market. Um, I also have an entrepreneurial side. Many of you who know me know me from the website that I've been running for the last several years. Uh, I do everything for the site from writing the code to designing the graphics, and it's all something I taught myself. Um, also, many years back, uh, while I was conducting re research for a business plan I was writing, I took a booth at the Fullerton Market, and I was selling items under my E squared equals MC product name. Um, but that's enough about me. I'm just going to turn briefly to the recall, because basically that's the reason we're all here tonight. Um, I said at an event last week that in talking to people about the recall, it reminded me a bit of the story about the blind man and the elephant where everybody had a little bit of a, a different idea of what the recall was about. And um, while well, I'm a firm believer in the right to petition government for redress of grievances, I also have to say that I do believe in giving credit where credit is due, which I think some, is something that has been a bit lost in this whole recall process. Um, one specific example I would give you is when you hear talk about the quote-unquote illegal water tax. I think it's fair to say that the council has been addressing this issue. We have a committee that's been addressing the issue. The council recently voted to stop the transfer funds from the uh, water fund to the general fund. And what is remaining to be decided is how the amount that is due to the people of Fullerton will be refunded to them. Um, in closing on this segment, I would like to say that my biggest disappointment in terms of the recall is that it does not appear that we will have the final portion of the independent investigators report prior to the June 5th election. Um, I've said before, going forward, that the city really needs to make sure that something like what happened to Kelly Thomas never happens again in the city. And I do think that uh, report is an important segment in determining how we will proceed on a policy basis moving ahead. Um, finally, I'll turn the issues the Chamber has asked us to address. In addition to the correspondence that we received as candidates from the Chamber, I see in the, candidate in the Chamber's 2012 Business Directory and Community Guide that the Chamber does have three or four very specific issues and concerns vis-a-vis -vis city government and the city council. And those are specifically related to infrastructure, availability and type of housing, and a local government culture that is focused on aiding as opposed to regulating local business, something which I definitely support. Um, I'd like to remind you first that this, this seat is basically a six-month seat, and it's the only seat you'll have to vote on twice this year, once now and then once again in the November election. And I think that if I could accomplish two things in the six months, um, they would be one, to bring the, the uh, water development issue or the water rate issue to a close, and also the city will be conducting a study session for develop, economic development in July and August. And I think I would be able to provide valuable input on policy-related direction as far as economic development in the city is concerned. Um, the Chamber's asked specifically on thoughts on Coyote Hills and um, low-income housing, and that's a difficult uh, issue at this time specifically because there will be a referendum on the November ballot. And also the one remaining item left in Sacramento is to decide how the low-income funds will be distributed. Um, I can't predict the future, I just make one statement. Um, I can tell you that what I've been doing now is reviewing all the documents, and I will say in the general plan, um, in the past it's been thought that the population limit for this city at full development is about 140,000. We're at about 135,000 now, and though I can't predict what, it's, what will happen, uh, the strain on our structure, the infrastructure is evident, and I think we need to deal with that uh, first before we address any other issues. You'll be able to approach anyone that you like. We have our third and final slate of candidates, and they are currently uh, looking to fill the position held by Mayor Pro Tem Patrick McKinley. So if you can come on up. Thank you, and thank Teresa for having this this evening. My name is Pat McKinley, and I've served on the City Council for approximately 18 months. 
However, I have a long history with uh, public service, uh, both military and police. Uh, my entire life has been spent with it. I was 45 years with police service, 16 years as your chief of police. I uh, retired in May of 09. Through that time, I, would, I have watched the, uh, the council and, and the things that we have accomplished. I'm pretty proud of this uh, council and what they've accomplished. One of the things I would like to bring to your attention is that we have a 10% a reserve that previous councils have said this is a good point, and I certainly agree. But we're $2.1 million over that 10% reserve. Now, other cities have used the reserves to try to balance their, uh, their uh, budgets and are in serious trouble. Now, we can say we need the streets fixed, we need this, we need that. You can't do it without economic development. The development has to be there first. The money has to be there before we can do that. So as we, as we decide what we will spend our money on, remember this city is fiscally conservative and fiscally in a very good position as compared to uh, uh, some of our friends. Regarding economic development, now redevelopment was our, redevelopment economic development was our uh, catalyst for over 40 years. It's gone. There's no sense talking about it. It's gone. Legislature can give, legislature can take back. So what we have to look at now is encouraging business encouraging development and encouraging money to come into this town. Now we talk about uh, what a lot of people call low-cost low housing. I like to call it workforce housing. Housing made available to those that don't make as much money as others, or police officers, nurses, teachers, so on. We need to have that, but there has to be an economic incentive to build it. Now if I have a business in town and I say I need my employees here, but they're driving 98 miles to get here, it would be an economically incentive for us to, to develop that. And I think that will work for us as we work to try uh, to move beyond what redevelopment has done in the past. We have to encourage private investment in this town. Now I do know several people have talked to me about coming into Fullerton, uh, some pretty big money people. What they're looking for is political stability. This city has been known for political stability over many years. We're not now. What I'm asking is that we re return to political stability and that we move forward as a, uh, as a city and, and, and get back to being a, a city of reason. Those seeking investments will come into the city as soon as we settle this issue, I think hopefully, uh, rightfully so. I do want you to know that the city is removing obstacles. Look at the uh, Fullerton plan. I'm very, very proud of it. Uh, the people that put that together, I, I think they did a magnificent job. One of the things that's in that plan is, uh, is the uh, uh, environmental things. We have taken and looked at those things and created a uh, level that's much easier if you want to come into town. Some of those environmental issues have already been taken care of in, in that plan. We're looking at zoning, creating zones that are, are much more uh, appropriate. One of the other candidates talked about manufacturing zones and so on to make easy movement. Now, my purpose in being here, my only purpose is to serve this city. All I seek is to is to serve out my term. Now, Travis uh, made a point that uh, all the funding for the uh, uh, for the anti-recall people are from uh, from my friends. But I will say that Travis's boss has put two hundred forty million or two hundred two hundred forty million dollars into. Or two hundred forty million. Boy, I wish I had that kind of money, right, Travis? Two hundred forty thousand dollars into the recall on a local election. Two hundred first forty thousand dollars trying to keep me from being elected, and now another two hundred thousand dollars to try to uh, uh, put this recall through. We can't fight that kind of money. We just can't. So I'm asking you to help us, support us, and vote no on the recall.
Thank you very much. Levinson. 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 Good evening. Thank you all for being here tonight. My name is Barry Levinson, and I am your reform candidate to replace Pat McKinley. It is so nice, Pat, that you showed up for this debate. You didn't show up for the two last week. So I'm glad you're here tonight at least. I have an MBA with honors from Boston University, and I have 35 years of accounting, auditing experience, including manager with Ernst & Young CPA firm, and former manager with Northrop Grumman Internal Audit Department. I believe very deeply that I am the only candidate that has these unique set of credentials to help run the city going forward. How does a council improve the business climate of their city? First, you ensure that the city has a balanced budget. Councilman McKinley's most recent statements on the second year of our current two-year budget was that he fully supports the proposed budget revision, which leaves a $1.4 million deficit. It's supposed to be balanced, ladies and gentlemen. Quote from McKinley, you can take any budget of this size and pick it apart, and we would never get a budget approved. We have been very successful in this city with our budget process. There may be a deficit here, but I think we'll overcome it." End quote. I believe it is reckless to approve a budget with a deficit, especially one that will likely grow. It represents the denial plaguing City Hall that somehow everything will turn out okay. Wishful thinking is not what our council members are elected to do, ladies and gentlemen. They are there to perform a thorough due diligence of the budget. The right approach is to ensure that actual budgetary numbers provide no deficit whatsoever. How do we plan for this? It is really very simple. First, you are very conservative with your revenue estimates for the budgetary period. Second, you consider all contingencies when it comes to expenses. Anything that has a, real, a realistic chance of occurring should be part of the expense numbers. As part of this analysis, a risk analysis profile should be used to better determine the estimated revenues and expenses. <coughs> when you follow these steps, the outcome will normally result in an actual small budget surplus. But if your conservative projections turn out to be correct, you still end up, ladies and gentlemen, with a balanced budget. I did not hear any of this at the latest midterm update of our two-year budget at the last council meeting. I did hear each department head stating that the status quo was used for their midterm budget review. The city council approach most likely will result in an actual deficit of greater than $1.4 million because the budget unfortunately ignored the in lieu of water fee refunds that could result in refunds of six to seven million dollars, totally ignored in this budget. And it also ignored the realistic potential losses from our growing number of lawsuits brought against this city, mainly from the actions of our police department. If these shortfalls do come to pass, it will force the city to take last minute drastic actions, which is never the most efficient nor effective way to run a city. The second thing you have to do is to make sure that business, business owners, residents, and shoppers have confidence in the Fullerton Police Department. This starts with a department that functions openly with the trust of the public. Our current department has been plagued by numerous allegations and lawsuits of police corruption, malfeasance, and criminality. So far, the department cannot even provide a reasonable, competitive approach to towing contracts for the city. Third, you end practice of picking winners and losers through redevelopment. Fourth, the city budget must always plan for and include infrastructure expenditures. The city has been lacking in this area for years, ladies and gentlemen. Therefore, as your next council member, one of my ideas for, for growth uh, for the city, I will put forward a motion to create a new ad hoc committee of local business leaders 
whose mission will be to provide to Council a list of ideas that will help attract new businesses as well as help grow existing businesses in Fullerton. The current Council majority and Pat McKinley have been not shown any leadership in this area whatsoever. I am prepared to move the city forward with real moral leadership, integrity, and honesty. I am Barry Levinson, and I ask for your vote this June 5th. I want to thank I want to thank the chamber, and I want to thank you, the audience, for your attention and coming here this evening. It really, I really do appreciate it very much. This is what democracy is all about. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Matthew Rowe. I want to thank the Chamber for uh, inviting us here to speak tonight. So let me start off with my background. Uh, I grew up here in Fullerton, a few blocks south of here on Southgate Avenue. I attended that school right over there, St. Uh, Mary's School. Uh, I went to Servite High School. Uh, while I was in high school, I worked for Congressman Ed Royce as an intern in his district office for three years. Uh, in my junior year of high school, Congressman Royce uh, asked me if I wanted to attend the United States Military Academy at West Point. And uh, I took him up on that offer. I got into the academy and uh, spent four years there, majored in Russian and Arabic with an additional concentration in nuclear engineering. I, after West Point, I served five years overseas in the United States Army, uh, leading soldiers in combat, uh, working on staff teams, uh, planning and resourcing complex training events, and uh, doing a lot of things before I left active duty in 2009. Uh, after that, I tried to start a business here in Fullerton, an important distribution business uh, located right off of uh, Imperial Highway in the north end of town. Uh, did that for a while, and then I went off to work for a private jet startup uh, in Long Beach as a planner in our operations department. I uh, left that company to pursue other opportunities. I've been with Honeywell Aerospace as a senior engineer and project manager for a little over the past year. Um, so we're talking about what we're doing to attract businesses here in Fullerton. Well, first to do that, you got to think like a business owner. There's a few members of our city council that haven't been in business. They've been in uh, public employees for their whole professional lives. I'm unfortunate where I've been a public service employee, and I've also been an entrepreneur, and I also work for a Fortune 100 company right now. Uh, what does a business owner want in coming to Fullerton? First, you want a marketplace to sell your products and services. We've got that here. In Southern California, we have a dynamic, diverse set of consumers uh, that have a lot of money to spend. Okay, what's the next thing you want? You gotta look at the cost of doing business in Fullerton. Well, a lot of that's due to regulation, taxes, uh, cost, to, cost of labor is the biggest. And are those really attributed to the city council in Fullerton? Most of those are California costs, and that's the, the biggest hurdles I encountered in trying to start my business was on Fullerton uh, fees and taxes, but in California, taxes and regulations, which is the reason a lot of the businesses have moved out of the state and onto other states with more favorable tax structures, and uh, less um, cumbersome rules. Okay, so if that's not the answer, well, what do we have here in Fullerton? We do have some screwy ideas, you know, encroachment fees for restaurants and cafes, penalizing them for doing business in this town. Uh, so we could probably fix that. Uh, econ economic development advisory teams, those are a good idea. Help businesses that are already moving here transition through the process and, and streamline things. Um, what do businesses look for? They look for an educated workforce. We have some colleges and universities in this town, and that's, that's an attractive thing to most businesses. Uh, they look for livability. We've got that mostly. We've got some nice trails and parks that people have mentioned. We've got a nice community here that uh, most people enjoy and appreciate. Um, then what else do we have? Infrastructure. No, we don't have a very good infrastructure here in Bolton. Why? Because our infrastructure has been robbed to pay for public employee unions, specifically the police and fire unions pensions and benefits. We have two recipients of those pensions and benefits on our city council steering back money from our tax dollars to go to pay for ever increasing costs of police department labor. And what are we getting for that labor? We're getting a lot of misconduct and abuse. Some people don't like to call that out, but that's the reason I got involved in running for city council. Unfortunately, I haven't been sitting on any city planning commissions and working my way up trying to uh, gear for a spot on city council over the last 10 years. I've been working full time. I've been serving my country. I was content to work for my life. And then when Kelly Thomas was killed about 200 yards from my front door, I got mad about it and I went to a city council meeting to find out what was going on. What I found was a lot of apathy. I found incompetence and a lack of compassion on the part of several members of our city council that refused to address the issue in the most general terms. 
So what did I do? I started to learn about city issues. And I started to learn about city issues, I got involved. And now I'm running for city council because I think I can do a better job. We've got 50% of our city budget, $37 million going to the police department out of $74 million operating budget. So if we talk about investing for businesses and infrastructure to attract them here, investing in maybe scholarships for science, technology, engineering, and math programs for kids, we can't do that because we're spending the money on other things. We're not spending the money where it needs to go. And that's a big problem. So then uh, we talk about redevelopment. You know, trying to start a business, I had to try to get loans. I used my life savings that I earned while I was in Iraq, uh, probably about $50,000 that I had spent and lost in trying to start my business. I had bank loans lined up from private investor and, and private investors willing to take a piece of my equity. I didn't want to go with that route, so I just spent my savings and I decided to get a job after it didn't work out. People that want to do projects here in the city shouldn't put the taxpayers on the, on the hook for their own private investments. You want to, if you want to develop something in this town, make sure there's a demand for it, get a loan, raise your own money. Fullerton taxpayers are tapped out. That's all I have to say. Thank you very much for inviting me here this evening. I've lived in Fullerton now for 61 years, had a business downtown for 40 years, all in downtown Fullerton, and maybe I've learned a few things during that time and seen a few things. My entire family has been through Fullerton schools, and I do understand what it means to be called the education community. I am involved in many activities, but this evening I only want to talk about one that is very current and that's Fullerton Interfaith Emergency Services has changed its name to Pathways of Hope. It's been my special privilege to represent Pathways on a pro bono basis. Currently, Pathways is being invited to serve homeless families in the city of Anaheim. We found a facility that may find housing for at least 10 more families with children that are homeless, and to make us feel welcome, the city of Anaheim is offering a $90,000 grant. I've also been involved in expanding the FIES program here in Fullerton. It's my pleasure to lead the uh, presentation to the Fullerton Planning Commission when that came forward for its approval. Now, one thing in town that's been talked about a lot is budgeting. There are two things about that. One is easy. How do you balance it? You just don't spend more than you take in. But then there's a the hard part. How do you do that? Well. When you prioritize, you'll soon find that at the very end, there are things you'd like to do, but you ran out of money. So we need to promote new business, and the other side of the street, bringing customers here to serve those businesses and, be, and spend money. Cal State has a new program. It's the only one that I know of in the United States. It's called the Entertainment and Tourism Management Program. And part of the encouragement is that those who participate in it seek out internships. I would dearly love to have some of those bright young people serving at City Hall and other venues in the town. Also, how do we do things that this has to do with a kind of housing called a hotel? I'd love to see a hotel at the train station or the small conference center. Imagine being able to, to uh, spend your time here in a hotel, shoot into LA or Irvine for your meetings and come back here and enjoy the delights of Fullerton in the evening. That would bring tremendous customer uh, to the city. I also, in the downtown, have a good there. I do see this pretty dead during the daytime, but I'd like to see built there as a major Class A office building where you have professional people who are there during the daytime, spending money, and also in the evening they go home making that parking available for evening activities. I have heard things about, uh, unfriendly things about business in town. I uh, met with one businessman he has the same business in 11 different cities. When he went into the city of Long Beach, the city of Orange, he got open in 90 days. Same business here in Fullerton, it took two years. There's a coffee shop not far from my office. The owner there had to pay rent for a year before he worked through the approval process. It nearly broke him. What we have in town at City Hall is a good program. It's called EDAP. It stands for Economic Development Action Team but it only seems to apply to major businesses. I want to apply that to small businesses and to homeowners who come in 
and want to do a remodel in their home. Housing, we have College Town underway. That, that I think is a good program, good connectivity. I'm hoping that we have transportation that connects it all around the town, including with the downtown. Um, County Hills, I'm the only candidate endorsed by the Orange County League of Conservation Voters. I'm the only candidate endorsed by the Sierra Club. In my heart, I would like to see that sought that saved entirely as a park, but I'm a realist too. I believe there's room for development and also satisfying environmental concerns there as well. The Kelly Thomas thing is a tragedy. I watched the tape of the murderous beating that he endured. I think we need to do a couple of things. One, make very clear that he was not engaged in any wrongdoing. I think we need to name, make a change in the grant structure so that the chief is not selected by the city manager. Instead, let's step out from that shadow and select the chief directly so we have responsibility where it belongs. And I'm an advocate of community policing. Unless the council jumps in with both feet and supports that actively and enthusiastically, it'll be hard to make that happen. There are some homeless issues uh, that I would like to address, uh, but don't have time. I'll simply say I've also been studying paramedic services in the city, and in my opinion, we can reduce the response time. If you have a stroke, it may save your life, or how, what quality of life you have is uh, an issue there. In closing, I believe in openness, and I will not engage in any, any much thing. I have not done so. I intend to run a positive campaign because there's so many positive things in this city. And thank you for coming out. And please keep coming out. You're key to the future of the city. Thank you. I would like to thank uh, the uh, Chamber of Commerce for putting this game together. Uh, thank the Fullerton Library for hosting it. This is the third event that uh, has been hosted at the library in the last eight days. And I would like to thank each and every one of you for coming and taking time from your busy schedule to learn about us, the candidates, learn about the recall. Uh, you know, I, our city has a lot of problems, and I don't want to sugarcoat them. I think all of us know that. I think all of us are here because we know that. But I will say this, as long as this electorate stays engaged like it is right now, I'm very optimistic that we will work our way through the problems that we have. And uh, we will emerge a stronger and more prosperous city because of it. Now, the, uh, the, this discussion was primarily about uh, economic development and what the city can do to sponsor economic development. Um, in a sense, I think the best thing to do would be to figure out a way to, to transport the city of Fullerton to another state so we don't have all of the onerous <laughs> burdens and regulations. That not being practical or possible, and, and I do understand a lot of the problems that we have are outside the city's control, but we can minimize the problems uh, that small businesses face when they try to open their doors in, in, uh, in Fullerton. I think, I think there's an important philosophy that anyone in government should have, and that is they need to know that government has very, very limited capacity to help business and enormous capacity to harm it. And I think if we keep that in mind, we will avoid making the kind of mistakes that businesses make. And I'm not just talking about delays in issuing permits, although that's definitely a part of the problem. You know, the longer a process takes to be completed, the more expensive it is, the more opportunities you give businessmen to back out, the harder you make it for businesses to succeed when they finally do open their doors. But it's more than that. The redevelopment agencies um, were birthed from this idea that the government could do something to spur economic development. And look at what we've got. We have hundreds of millions of dollars of bond debt. Uh, we've torn down a number of perfectly good buildings in the downtown area uh, and you know, nicer buildings, newer buildings, but it's burdened us with debt. It wasn't a blighted area when it was built. Meanwhile, there are parts of the city that are blighted. Near where I live off of uh, Raymond and, uh, and Commonwealth is a shopping center that's deteriorated quite significantly. Now, am I proposing we change our priorities and focus there? No. I, what I'm suggesting is we recognize the fact that government is not 
the best source of fixing our economy. It is the private sector. And uh, Mr. McKinley said something earlier uh, when he was talking about, uh, uh, he said that uh, we can't spend the money on infrastructure until we have the business here. Uh, Mr. McKinley has it completely backwards, I'm sorry. You put the money in the infrastructure and that brings the business here. And by doing that, we've built something that's all that we need anyway, and we have to have anyway, something that benefits everybody in the city who goes down those roads. Not just whichever business has been able to take advantage of that particular tax break or below market uh, purchase of property. So we have to get out of that, that redevelopment business completely. And instead of spending money to acquire property at below market prices, we need to be using that money to build up the infrastructure so that the private sector is willing to take those risks themselves. Because that's what's going to turn this, business, this city around. Uh, OK, we have a little bit about housing. Uh, one of the uh, previous council candidates, it was uh, Glenn Georgief, made an excellent point. Uh, we are a, the, the best path to prosperity is home ownership. And that should be encouraged. And I think that, and rather than any specific programs, focusing on infrastructure repair will help that. I mean, when, a, when a homeowner sells a house, they paint the house, they pull out the weeds, they replace broken windows. The city needs to do the same thing. We need to make the infrastructure look like a place that people want to live and want to do business. Um, we have a little bit of time left. Uh, probably should say a little bit about the recall with the time that I have left. Uh, I am supporting the recall. I, I will be signing. I, I signed the recall petition and I will be voting to recall in June. This isn't, this isn't any personal animosity towards any candidates, but I believe we need a city council that's accountable to the people. And uh, the city council did not hold the police department accountable for their actions, and not just the actions of the officers, but the actions of uh, sellers on down in not treating that attack with the seriousness that they should have in the days after the attack. Now, I don't know if they're criminally guilty, but I do know that, they, that the city did not respond properly. I think that's sufficient reason. Thank you for coming. And I will be very happy. It's very clear that we have a lot of very passionate people, and I think that's great. It's what makes Fullerton great. Um, the candidates, thank you. We can put your, if you have literature, please set it up on the side. We've got water and cookies. This is your opportunity to meet one on one. Drive safely when you leave. Thank you.